there. Hello, everybody. Mishko Pognon Quain, Edition of God's Mundo Dam. My name is Sandy Boucher. I'm Red Thunderbolt. I can talk, honestly. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Northern Ontario. And I'm here, as is the new habit, with my Sunday Facebook Live. And I hope some of you are able to come out and join me. If not, you can watch it in a replay, whatever works for you. So it's been a week, hasn't it? I'm gonna start off today by asking, how are you? Like honestly, seriously, indigenous or non, this was a hard week. Um, eye-opening week. Uh, for some, I hope an enlightening week. I hope this week added to your knowledge of Canadian history, added to your understanding. A lot went on this week, so I hope you're okay. If you're not, please reach out to someone to talk about it, a safe person. Uh, you deserve to be okay. And I hope that you have the supports for that. So I wanted to start off by asking, how are you? Secondly, um, I guess, wow, my week has been amazing and intense at the same time. I was thinking about it this morning and I was thinking, you know what? I spent the whole week feather dancing. And what I mean by that, if you've attended any of my seminars, some people, some non-Indigenous people refer to two sides of a coin. I always talk about two sides of the feather. And I honestly believe that the feather Canada is carrying, half of that feather is Indigenous people and half of that feather is non-Indigenous people. And when we educate ourselves and heal and come together in respect, and, and hold space for each other, that's when the feather that Canada holds grows stronger. So when I say I was feather dancing this week, what I mean is I was dancing between the two sides. I was going from responding to emails and Facebook messages and text messages from Indigenous that were hurting and, and just holding space for each other and sharing our tears because the tears need to be shed. We can't rush to solution. That's not grieving. The grieving comes first. And, and I held a lot of space for grieving this week. But at the same time, I danced on the other side of the feather. And this week, I had the chance to do an amazing seminar. And when I say amazing seminar, I'm not talking about the content I offered. I talk, I'm talking about the participants that I had the chance to work with. And they were non-Indigenous and so lacking in knowledge, which is not your fault. If things have never been taught to you, how can you possibly know them? But they were brave and they were vulnerable and they asked their questions as best they could. And I was thrilled to be able to answer. And even more importantly, they heard me and I gave them links to continue on their educational journey. And it was just, so heartwarming for me. It was exactly what I needed to do and, and what I needed to experience on that side of the feather. So that definitely happened. So that was the first thing, this amazing seminar. And I believe we have to hold space. We have to create safe spaces, which is my career, create safe spaces to have those discussions and answer those questions, understanding that a lot of Indigenous people are not yet at the time or space that they can do that. I've had to do a lot of personal healing and growth before I'm able to do this work, and that needs to be respected. Indigenous people as a whole have been through a lot and they can't be expected to educate non-Indigenous people, but for us that can I truly believe it helps with the process. So that was the first amazing thing that happened. And the second one, uh, for again, those that follow my career, I am constantly learning and growing as a person, as a facilitator. I figure the better I get, the better I can serve my audiences and the people I love, which is you. So I was watching a personal growth session being facilitated by a woman who has done a lot of personal work. 
And she mentioned something that literally made me stop in my tracks and go back and repeat it. So I made sure I heard what she said right. She was talking about what sparked her to start on her personal healing journey. And the quote she said, the sentence she said that just rocked my world was she had realized she had lived the same year twice. And I honestly had to stop. I can honestly say I have never done that because I've always been conscious of leveling up and learning more and growing and changing, whether it was professionally, personally, in my relationship as a parent, whatever, I'm always growing. A lifelong learning process has been my process for years. So I stopped because I couldn't imagine what that would be like. And then I realized how many people I know who could probably say that that are in this routine, this, this hamster wheel of a life with nothing changing, no growing, no new experiences, no learning, no new people coming in. And personally, I just thought that was the saddest thing I've ever heard. And I hope you're not in that hamster wheel. I hope that you're still open to learning and growing and meeting new people, even if it's online. Uh, I mean, just living a year once is good enough. I'm, I'm 57 now. I don't want to relive 45. I don't want to relive 17. I want to fully embrace and experience 57 because it's going to be gone so quickly. And if I do it right, then 58 is going to be bonus. And that's how I've lived my entire life. So I wanted to share that quote with you because like, holy moly's, I'm just, I'm still in shock processing that. Another thing I wanted to share with you today, the three of the four, was I received a lot of messages from non-Indigenous people this week and all asking, what can we do? What should we do? Which is even more important. And I was thinking about it and I offered suggestions and I gave answers to everyone who reached out. I wouldn't do otherwise. But today I was reviewing the week like I always do. What did I learn? What could I do better? What did I knock out of the park? And I came up with three steps that if every non-Indigenous person in Canada just did this, we would move so far ahead because on our side of the feather, the indigenous side, we're focused on healing and overcoming past trauma. And we got a lot of work to do on our side of the feather. We're not just sitting here waiting for you guys. We got work to do. But on the non-indigenous side, I see a mistake happening and we need to correct that. So first off, the very first thing I personally would love to see non-indigenous Canadians do is open your eyes. I need you to start seeing what's happening around you. I need you to start noticing how indigenous people are treated in your area. And please don't just whitewash that as we respect everybody. I want you to, before you make an assumption, I want you to really start watching. I want you to watch for the eye rolls from the sales clerk. I want you to watch for indigenous youth that are just followed around stores. And I realize this isn't as bad in some, some large urban centers, definitely an issue in the city I live in. So at that point, I just want you to observe. I want you to take off the rose colored glasses that say that everything is perfect and start really seeing the reality. That's step one. Step two, which I need you to get to really quickly, once you start observing and seeing the reality, is I need you to quote unquote, stop the bleeding. And when I master this video later, I will put in the subtitles, but I need you to stop the bleeding, which means when you hear someone say a racist slur against indigenous people, against black people, against newcomers, against LGBTQ+, I don't care who it's against. If it's a racist stereotype or a slur, 
shut it down. You don't need to call the person a racist, but you need to say not in my city, not in my town, not in my country, not acceptable. That's horrible. Please keep those thoughts to yourself. Whatever you need to say, at least call it out. They may not listen to you, but the other people will have heard you. You will have set an example. We have to stop having spaces where those comments are just allowed to happen because that is damaging our country and all of the people in it, and especially the targets of those slurs. So one, become aware of your reality, the real reality, to stop the bleeding by speaking up because you, we want to heal. We can't heal if we're getting stabbed every single day. This is a death by a thousand cuts here. The slurs keep happening. I know they happen to me and I'm not even dark. My family members of darker complexion suffer way more as do my friends. We need to be aware, stop the bleeding. And then, and only then, do you take the time and the energy to go take the course and read the books and educate yourself on Indigenous history? Because what I am seeing is way too many non-Indigenous people are jumping to option number three. You know why? It's easy. It's safe. You can sit in your comfy living room and read a book and become more educated and nothing changes. My mom would be the first to say wisdom without action is useless. It doesn't help anyone. You have to share the wisdom. You have to do something. So there's your three steps. Become aware of your surrounding. Stop the bleeding by shutting down those attacks. Even if no one of that group is around to hear it, it happened, it poisoned that air. Please help clear the air and then educate yourself. There's the three steps. The last thing I wanted to do, so what I've been focusing on for probably the last week is the final review of my next book, which as people who follow my career know, it is I Am Awake. It is a collection of the best of the best of three years of my morning blog posts. And I love this book. It is such a beautiful combination of the healing and grieving of Honorary Indian, my first book, and the reconciliation work of the path. If you want to know what my life is and what my thought process are, are and how I process this world, this is the book. And what I wanted to share with you, because I think it's totally on point, this is the August 14th, or will be the August 14th entry from the book. And I just wanted to read it to you. I have it written down here. I didn't memorize it or anything. I'm not quite that busy. So here it is. I am awake, I'm alive, and this morning I'm so thankful for the teachers, the helpers, and the friends, for they are so often the light that ends the darkness. Last night's dreams were so disturbing, a testament to the stories I have heard of late, stories of children shocked and are horrified at the tender ages of four and five as they discover their brown skin and the reality that they are native in this land. The women and men shamed for attempting to attain an education of abusive communities seething in unhealthiness. In seminar, I hear it all. But at the same time, I am listening to survivors, warriors who have gone on in spite of the chains Men and women who have worked to break the restraints of stereotypes and legislation to earn a living and enjoy a life. But last night's dreams reminded me of the pain felt by so many. Not the inconvenience, not the annoyance, the pain. The pain of being centered out, the pain of being excluded, the pain of being judged for everything we do and don't do. Upon waking, I knew I had to smudge, that all of this can't be carried by any one individual. And as I picked up my bundle, I noticed for the first time that the sun was just beginning to rise. A sunrise ceremony, I thought to myself, the dawn of a new day. 
but I've never actually attended a sunrise ceremony. Unsure of the protocols, I resolved to simply face the morning sun, to light my smudge, to bathe in the healing smoke, to pray for all who still hurt. As I returned inside after my ceremony, I heard her, my friend. She told me as she had a hundred times before to just do it, to not worry about doing it properly, that it was so much more important to do it from the heart with respect and honesty. I miss my friend so much. She was the one I called when I didn't know what to do and it seems I still do. So today, my friend, a challenge. Today, let's not make it about us. Instead, let us speak of them. Let us make life easier for them. Let us show respect to them. Let us show hospitality to them. The ones who have been cast out for far too long in this city, province, and country. The Anishinaabe who still exist. Today, let us resolve to honor and respect the original peoples of this land for they didn't go anywhere. We are right here in various stages of pain and healing. We are here waiting, waiting for a change in your behavior as we so desperately try to change our own. Today, let us not do what we were taught. Today, let's do better. I love you, my friend. I know you won't let me down. There you have it, my friend, this week's Facebook Live. I really look forward to doing that this, this week. And that's the first time because this is still pretty new to me. But I was looking forward to seeing you. And I'm so thankful that you came out. Until next Sunday, I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.